Hi everyone, this is Sindhya Balasingh, host of MOV Leaders Podcast, where we are celebrating women leaders. Before jumping into today's episode, I'm going to recall about someone who inspired me from childhood. We are going to talk about Rani Lakshmi Bai. She's the queen of Jhansi. She born in late 1800s in a very traditional Brahmin family. But unlike the conventional way of growing up, she grew up with men. Because of that also, in a very unconventional way, at that point of time, she was well versed in all the martial arts, scholar, as well as she is a great, a great horse rider too. And she is no less than a king in all angles. And she was well qualified. And she got married to Mr. Gangadhar, the king of Jansi. So she got, she got herself the position as a queen and they were rebelling against British. And it was a peak time. She, her bravery proved a lot in that regime. She had a lot of personal tragedies. Her son died in his fourth month. Also, she lost her husband in her 22nd year. And she was a young widow. And that time, British was waiting to capture the Jansi. And they had a reason that there is no hire to rule the regime. Though she adopted a son one day prior to her husband's death, British was no ready to take that child as a king. But she didn't give up. She screamed out loud. And she said, Jansi will not bow down anybody apart from anybody else. And she didn't give away to Britishers at all. Till her last breath, she struggled. And she was fighting for the freedom of Jansi. Wow, what a brave leader she was. Maybe such leaders are were there in our ancient times because of which only women are so brave today also to face all the challenges and come up as leaders in whatever field they are in. Today, we are going to meet one such brave leader who, are, who inspired me in my career. So today I'm going to welcome Jay Shri, Director of Global Protection System from PayPal. Without any further delay, let's welcome Jay Shri to the show. Welcome, Jayashree. Hi, Sindhya. What a hi. hi. Uh, what a fantastic, um, you know, personality that you've talked about. Uh, yes. Queen of Jansi, Rani Lakshmi Bai, Mani Karnika. Um, I think we've read very little about her in our history books. I wish there is more of her tales that celebrate yeah. it. What a fearless woman to stand up against the British at such a young age and being a widow back in the 1800s. There is so much of taboo that was around her and so much of personal strategy, uh, strategy like uh, you know you mentioned that she has faced and yet she stood for the country and she led so many men into the war. And in fact, if I'm not wrong, she is the primary uh, force behind our India's you know freedom fight uh, struggle right. to begin. Uh, you know, hats off to her and. Um, You've genuinely inspired me, you know, for today's podcast by talking about her. Uh, so thank you so much. I'm really excited to be part of this uh, leaders uh, podcast episode. And um, maybe let me quickly uh, share about myself. Um, I've been in the tech industry for 23 years and for over 15 years in technology leadership roles, where I had the opportunity to build innovative products for consumers and enterprises. Um, I joined PayPal in the US about 15 years ago, and I've been leading multiple roles of increasing, lead, increasing leadership responsibilities within the company. And I moved back to PayPal Chennai in 2011. It's almost been 10 years. And I currently head the Global Protection Services team in India. I'm uh, very passionate about uh, empowering women in the workplace. And wellness is a way of life for me. So I love ideating, sharing, and leading that also in the workplace. I'm a diehard sports enthusiast and a singer and a movie buff. I did my bachelor's uh, degree in electronics and communication engineering in India, and I did my MBA from uh, Santa Clara University in the US. I'm happily married, have two daughters who keep me busy all the time, and I've had a you know great uh, career so far as a women leader, um, and no way close to the challenges, kind of challenges that Queen of Jhansi might have faced, but nevertheless uh, believe in being you know quite fearless, and uh, I'm really excited to be here, Cynthia. Great, great, Jeshri. What a what a journey, right? I read your bio, Jeshri. Uh, you started as a software developer and you moved all the way up. And today, you're the director of uh, uh, global protection services in PayPal is no joke, uh, right? So when we had our earlier discussion, also um, you always mentioned that leader is not about the designation or the job title. It's all about how we inspire, influence, and impact the community, right? Uh, who follows us. So how you are true leader, according to me, how does it, how do you do all these things? 
this is very close to my heart, uh, Cynthia. So thank you for asking me about this. Um, so if I were to trace an underlying thread of how I've carried myself, you know, both in my professional or personal space in all these years, I'll probably, um, you know, describe myself in three words, uh, fearless, empathetic, and impactful. Uh, let me take maybe a minute to share a little bit of context around that. Um, I'm quite fearless in the way I think and approach things. And uh, I always ask myself the question, what's the worst that can happen? And this really helps me, you know, peel the layers of an onion and truly face my fears and deal with it. And uh, I also don't worry too much about how others are judging me. And uh, that helps me get the, get the courage to give a shot at something without uh, holding myself back. And uh, because of this, I think I'm able to encourage and empower my teams to take risks and truly have their back because I'm not really worried about, you know, failing because I, I you know, like everybody says, failure is the only way to, you know, keep learning. And uh, the second thing um, is I really believe in kindness above everything else. Uh, and this helps me in being empathetic. And I always ask myself the question, what if I'm in that person's shoes? How would I want or deserve to be treated in this situation? How would I want or deserve to be spoken to in this situation? And asking this to myself truly helps me in understanding the other person's point of view and connect with individuals where someone feels like they're truly understood. I think that's what we really want you know, at the end of the day. And it becomes much more easy to influence someone's thinking beyond their boundaries when we truly try and understand them and demonstrate that we are trying to understand them. And uh, finally, I think, um, you know, this is part of my core belief system and, you know, values and my life philosophy itself. Uh, I strongly believe that I am on this earth as a soul to make a positive impact on as many lives as possible, uh, whether I'm at PayPal or outside in a corporate setting or doing something else um, at work or among my family or friends. Whatever I do, I always ask again, you know, the question to myself, am I spending my time in making a positive impact with the way I talk, with the way I behave or carry myself? Am I making someone else believe that they can do more than what they think they can do? So again, you know, these are a few things I anchor myself around and it's tremendously helped me uh, to be the kind of leader, uh, you know, that uh, I am, I think. Wow. Uh, that's very um, inspirational. In fact, I would uh, say when you said that failure uh, makes you to see what is next for us. And, uh, you know, it's a, always people will say failure is the stepping stone of success, but many will drop their ball when they see a series of failures. But always it is like, instead of saying destiny, I would have always seen we have our own path. There will be hurdles. It is always like a video game, right? You have more hurdles you fight more, uh, you know, um, enemies or your own fears, then only you can go. And uh, as your level grows up, there will be challenges will keep growing. I, that I is love that analogy, Cynthia. I might use it sometime in the future, but I love that analogy. <laughs> yeah, life is interesting, right? That's how we yeah. all uh, enjoy. I would, uh, you know, it's a small incident for me also. After completing my engineering, with, like uh, coming out of flying colors, I got placed uh, in the first company and I was on top of the world. Um, you know, but I remember people who uh, got placed after me, like in a ninth company, 10th company, right? I got placed in first company in a US based company. Recession hit very badly. And in that company, nobody was called, but whoever uh, got placed afterwards, everybody got placed. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I had a one year break that, but I used that one year break to prepare on my MBA as well as I was teaching in a college, which made me to come out of my fear as a public speaker. I, you know, taking classes for your uh, final year students and third year students. You can imagine like, you know, how you have to be. So I think I have learned a lot uh, there, uh, you know, not bothering about what people are saying. I, I become pretty bold and I started accepting that life will not be as you plan, but it will always, you will have your new path to somehow reach your destiny. It's all, it's not about destination, right? It's always about journey, how beautiful it is. So that's how I, Kept on learning. It's not a every time something I'll plan, something will happen, but in the end, it will all be good. So, one thing I learned from my experiences you should never stop trying, right? Whatever you like to do. And uh, leaders like you always inspiring, uh, inspire me to do so. But one thing always um, I used to think this because I have seen women in marketing, HR, 
uh, you know, those kind of fields I have seen a lot of women leaders. But engineering, right? I always see um, not much uh, tech leaders are there in the engineering field. Uh, there's always a struggle for women to grow up in the career ladder of uh, engineering. So when I, I seen you, I was like, wow, how she made it? Starting from a software developer and now sitting in the top of the ladder in the tech field as a tech leader. What are the challenges you have faced in this journey, um, Ajayshree? And how did you overcome it? And what do you think we need to do to empower the women to climb up the tech leadership roles? Fantastic, uh, Cynthia. I think, um, uh, like, like you rightly said, I think the you know pyramid becomes narrower at the top. That's what we have seen, yeah. especially uh, you know in women mm -hmm. uh, leadership roles. So maybe let me start uh, you know from when I was in school. Uh, so I was you know academically bright and um, had a very special affinity for math and computer science, um, and I loved the idea of you know writing computer programs to do something faster than you know we can do humanly possible. So it was the equivalent of, you know, creation for me, right? Like, you know, like how you can create like a, a sculpture or a painting, you know, it was sort of the equivalent of that for me to be able to, you know, write programs uh, where you, um, you know, the beauty of an algorithm and then translating it into a program using the right syntax and see the magic of, you know, output on your screen. It was so exciting. And it was magical almost. Uh, so after I did my engineering, uh, like most 90s kids, you know, did, I entered the IT industry around the Y2K time frame. It was, it was a very exciting journey. And I enjoyed the challenges of being part of teams and solving problems and um, working with, you know, and learning from people, understanding requirements and delivering programs really far, fast and all that. But over years, though, um, I started realizing that my heart lied in, you know, people management more than you know, being just an individual contributor. So the joy of, you know, helping and seeing other people succeed and through that, see my own success was something else. You know, it was another level of, uh, you know, satisfaction, right? So Thank I was you. looking for ways in which I could get into people management side and decided to pursue my, you know, MBA. And I was in the US at that time. And um, while I was doing my MBA, thankfully for me, the opportunity to move into a people leader role um, happened while I, you know, while I was pursuing itself. So what I found was that as a women leader, you know, leading engineering teams, um, you had to strive a little harder to prove yourself. You know, that was the reality to be taken seriously, to be heard. Um, you had to talk the common language. You had to lead design discussions, ask relevant questions to establish, you know, credibility, lest you're seen only as a people leader rather than as a technology leader. And um, organizations, you know, to really help um, empower and enable women to be seen as an equal, I think they need to foster forums that bring both women and men together to break down some of these, you know, unconscious biases or stereotypes that we all have in our head, not out of any ill will or malice, but just based on purely what kind of exposure, you know, we all have through our society, through our families and all that. And this kind of, you know, forums, they go a long way in providing a proper ecosystem for women to thrive. Wow. So you partially actually answered my uh, next question, but still I'll ask you that question. You mentioned that women are always perceived as people leader than a technology leader, but you proved to be a people leader as well as a technology leader. What uh, I understand that you told that there are forums, unconscious bias companies are also trying, teams are also trying, but in your level, uh, what you have done, uh, something different to break this perception, how you have come across this uh, uh, perception and made yourself as a technology leader so that all of us can learn from you, uh, Jayashree, on that. Absolutely. So maybe um, uh, I'll, I'll share the journey of, you know, uh, what contributions, you know, I've made uh, to these kind of, you know, forums for women. So after 10 years in the US and I, when I moved to PayPal, uh, you know, Chennai, um, I had the wonderful opportunity to lead various employee groups in India, including uh, Unity, uh, which is a forum to empower women. Uh, so in the three years that I led uh, Unity, we had some really unique programs to enable and empower women, um, you know, right from inspiring speaker sessions to workshops on self-defense to what we called as, you know, shadow a leader program. Uh, to mentoring programs, to uh, skill development workshops, to community outreach activities, uh, to tech talks by you know senior women technologists, to a program called Girls in Tech, where it instills an interest in STEM 
STEM uh, stream of uh, learning for employees' daughters as well as underprivileged girls, to a program called you know Recharge, which was about you know bringing women back to work after a break, to a lot of wellness initiatives women uh, for women, just a ton of things. But if you think about all of this, right? It was all about uh, sort of building women's you know confidence, building women's you know abilities, building women's mm -hmm. Um, perception about both themselves as well as the perception of you know how women are perceived you know in the organization right all of this was sort of the underlying you know theme or pillars around which we will con we were continuing to rally and if you ask me if have things gotten better in the last decade absolutely right uh, there is more conversation about diversity and inclusion in every organization even unity you know subsequently there have been other women leaders who have led unity you know after uh, you know me and it's it's gotten it's, it's continuing to keep growing to the next level in terms of the impact you know that we can create um, so I think the key really for any woman, uh, you know, technology uh, individual contributor or a leader is how do you gain credibility? Um, you know, how do you gain credibility? And the only way is to gain knowledge, uh, to ask questions, you know, to surround yourself with people that you think know more than you. Um, ask, you know, questions without being shy. You know, you'll, you know, you'll ask four dumb questions in the beginning. And then it will come down to, you know, one dumb question and then you will start, you know, answering the questions, right? That's how you keep moving up the levels. And um, you build that confidence, you know, through trial and error. And, um, you know, you, how do you connect with other women? How do you seek out mentors? And then own your narrative. I think, you know, it's very important as, you know, women professionals that we own our narrative. Uh, we, we demonstrate that confidence through which others, you know, perceive us the way we want us to be, you know, perceived. Wow, wow, that was really inspiring. It's a personal uh, learning experience for me to uh, Jayshree. The one, um, this initiative of MOV leaders also we have done uh, for an instance that today uh, we don't know how much uh, women leaders are celebrated, how much they have been given a platform to talk about themselves. A lot of uh, um, you know leaders who came earlier for the episode also was trying that how self-branding has been perceived wrongly and how women themselves are consciously thinking that um, they should not tell what good they have done. It is not uh, really good. They should not advocate for themselves. It will be look, uh, looked as a show off or uh, an attitude. So women are underplaying subconsciously. Uh, it's not. I always tell to my team also, it is not something, uh, projection is not a wrong thing. Projecting something which you are not doing or which you are uh, stealing the credits from others is a wrong thing. What you are doing, if you are not able to market to yourself, and you cannot expect others to have a time, come and observe themselves, and you know give you the due credit. It's not a fair expectation too. So uh, in that way, a uh, lot of forums and platforms are really, really important for women to come, share their experience, inspire others, and motivate themselves. Absolutely. So that I personally believe. That is why um, this initiative has uh, come across. So. Um, uh, Jayshree, um, another thing which um, I, I admire about you, uh, you know, I always talk about multitasking in um, various forums. Uh, okay, So um, I, I tell a famous example that, you know, we are so good in cooking, cutting vegetables, attending meeting, watching our kids all at the same time, right? So that itself is a multitasking. But in life, you are doing day in, day out. You are a senior leader. Uh, that too, uh, tech leader, it's not an easy uh, job. Uh, you are a singer, you are a sports person, you are a great speaker, and of course, a mother of two. So how do you do all these things, Carly? How do you balance all these things? Um, so I I think, you know, I mentioned it while, you know, right from my you know childhood, I'm a person of many interests. And uh, I was never shy of trying anything new. And you mentioned it about yourself also, Cynthia, right? I think um we always have to you know give it a try what's the worst that can happen right that's the that's always something i ask myself so in addition to you know um uh, you know being a bright student when i had so many of these interests i had to find a way to make the time for it um i you know i became a master at uh, making time for doing things because um if i don't then i was left unhappy that hey i'm not trying something right so um irrespective of what anyone else thought or said i 
i owned my interest and without any guilt shame or regret i went about you know giving it a try and that doesn't mean i was uh, disrespectful towards you know others or took others for granted or didn't take care of my responsibilities right but the moment we own our needs we own our interest i think it becomes easier to create a support system around us to do things we really want to do Okay. um so that's the first thing right like to really use you know time as the magic wand that you really have and the second aspect is uh, you know there's a child like enthusiasm in me to anything i do um and if you observe children uh, they're quite comfortable to be ingenuous and uh, they to have that curiosity to try to not worry too much about others uh, to have an appreciation for the little things in life uh, to believe in you know the you know goodness in people and to want to just to have fun um, i think when one has an attitude uh, like that uh, you can try your hand at many things and develop your interest um, and maybe the uh, last aspect that i would say that helps me uh, you know with balancing a lot of interest is um, you know this is something that someone else observed and told me i didn't even realize uh but once this person observed and told me i could you know i could relate to it that you know yeah what this person you know says makes sense so what this person told me is jayshree you seem to have this ability to think 10 steps ahead and then unfold that in the present and i really loved the way this person articulated it to me uh, so i i realized that yes i do that you know i plan ahead i think ahead i think through what if scenarios um and i visualize myself in the situation already uh, playing it out inside my head even before it happens right um and this gives me more control over how i spend my time when it actually happens when you know actually what i want to experience is you know unfolding right um so that doesn't mean i'm not spontaneous you know you can ask my friends i'm probably the most spontaneous goofy you know adventurous person also right but somehow um, you know i'm able to do both plan ahead as well as you know be spontaneous in the moment once the you know moment uh, starts playing out uh, so i guess it's a combination of you know prioritizing you know time for things that is of interest to me as well as owning it with a child like enthusiasm and to think and plan ahead maybe that's the secret to my balancing act amazingly put out right uh, that that is a very good way of not feeling guilty about what we wanted to uh, do and uh, you know just to um, recall in my instance also i'll be happy for everything small small things also i'll be very happy uh, every time i get an opposition i will come and share with my parents this with the same happiness you know every time promotion every time a new initiative i do i'll be sharing with the same enthusiasm sometimes my father will ask this is what every time happens no why are you so excited about it i'll tell him that every time if you are cutting your uh, you know um, a, nail, a nail or cutting your finger during the uh, vegetable chopping you will not feel the pain is it you will feel the pain right same way the happiness is also the same way every time it happens also it makes me to feel happy and i love doing that so hence i uh, does that in fact when i started this, i, I, I can sense that vibe from you when i when we converse uh, cindy absolutely awesome yes because when i did this mov leaders and um, i accepted to be part of uh, diversity inclusivity committee member i have a four and a half year old kid uh, many asked like why you are unnecessarily stressing yourself by taking all these things i'll say i never told this is stress this is something i love to do and i'm sure still i have time still i i can do something this is what i always feel maybe i could also relate like i think women we are in genes we have that planning ability we sure. have that uh, futuristic view and we always see that you know even many will make fun of uh, you know uh, mothers doing planning for lunch dinner breakfast but it's not an easy task True. to keep the variety up to know who likes what planning for the whole uh, week and uh, you know getting the groceries for that it's planning is i think it's a everyday uh, thing for us also it's an imbibed uh, quality but i'm hats off to you for using that imbibed quality to your reality and executing what you wanted uh, in your style um keep doing that and keep inspiring everybody uh, jayshree in the one more conversation uh, earlier conversation uh, you were mentioning that you know uh, about you leading many forums attending many forums lot of initiatives uh, today it is a proven fact that organization who are having an inclusion inclusivity in workplace environment performs better and their outcomes are better so there are a lot of forums and platforms for a inclusive work work culture you being part of many of that forums there is any profound learning or someone who inspired you who you wanted to share about um absolutely uh, probably i'll uh, you know uh, rather than a workplace experience maybe i'll share something you know personal um like many 
uh, I think you know uh, my mother, you know, is my role model. I've, I've learned so much, uh, you know, from her. Uh, but there is uh, this profound learning that I've truly found to uh, resonate with a lot of people every time I share. Right. So I really would like to use this forum to you know share as well. Um, so my mom uh, was the first woman in her family to go to college, first woman to start working, all by rebelling, you know, for her cause and interest. And um, my bedtime stories were peppered with stories of you know how she stood her ground to get the support she knew, needed to pursue education or then to start a career or uh, stories from her workplace when she faced biases or stereotypes and how she boldly dealt with them right never from a victim standpoint but more from a you know the positivity of hey this is what happened this is how I, you know I, I dealt with it you know type of a story right so i i truly grew up on that steady dose of uh, you know, values of, you know, standing up for what's right and standing up for what you aim for and be fearless to call, you know, what's wrong, you know, right from my childhood. Right. And um, I also saw my mother being a great mentor uh, to anyone who needed help, support or motivation and always keeping herself active and quite enterprising, you know, with her interests. And um, so, you know, I, for me, I, I'm only trying to emulate, you know, all that, you know, she has taught me and uh, she continues to be my mentor uh, till date. And uh, one of the things that, you know, she told me when I was six years old that continues to be a driving force uh, for me uh, is this. Even if you don't do great things in life, do every small thing in a great way. I think, you know, for me, this has had a very profound impact on me. And I would love, I, I always, you know, share this with as many people that I can. Because if we can think about life like that, of a stream of string of, you know, little, little, little things that will really add up to our life, right? Like when we, when we go back and, you know, just turn around, it's always going to be those little things that's going to add up in the end. And if we can focus on that small little thing that's in front of you, for example, this podcast, you know, today, tomorrow it could be in a something else, some other delivery. Right. For every single thing, if you can try and give your best to, you know, try and make it the greatest that you can do for that moment, then I think, you know, you would have built yourself a life that is a string of, you know, beautiful, great things, right? So for me, this has been a very profound, you know, learning that, you know, I, um, that has had a very great impact on me. And, um, for me, seeing the kind of impact, you know, that my mom has had on people, I take it as a personal responsibility to continue to pay it forward uh, inside my head for every person, you know, uh, that I you know support or offer some advice or encourage or motivate or guide, irrespective of whether it is appreciated or not by them, it is valued by them or not. I know I'm paying it forward. And that gives me the most happiness and satisfaction, you know, to keep me going. Uh, so that's probably what I would like to share. Uh, that uh, really uh, just not for sake of saying i'm keep repeating this uh Jayashree, but uh each of your answers are very to the point insightful and we can have a takeaway uh so i can see that how much uh your mother has influenced you uh in that uh when you are um you know sharing about her uh all this mother is the source of energy and inspiration i at least i think three four episodes i would have spoken about my mother a lot and still um, as I always say, um, I know if suddenly if I feel that roof is falling on my head, I know one person I can go and she will actually see let it uh, fall. We will see the sky very much uh, clearer and we will have a uh, you know, great thing. Let's go to the sky is what she will always say. So, Awesome. Mothers are mothers, right? And, uh, and then the only thing is, can, can we live up to be good mothers, you know, for our uh, children? And hope I, I'm sure right. we're doing a good job, but, you know, that's, yeah. that's yeah. the aspiration. I always tell her that, you know, um, uh, today at 60 years, if you're like this, if I don't know how I will be, but if at least 50%, if I could make out uh, to that, I'll be a great person. Not even a mother, a great person I'll be. So mothers are inspiration as always. So you are one such inspirational leader as well, uh, Jayashree. So for all the um, podcast listeners out there, uh, what you wanted to say? And what is your advice or something? You, I, I would not even say advice or what you really wanted to tell to them or just take uh, your... So may, maybe, um, you know, um, if there is nothing else that anyone takes away from this you know podcast maybe this message that i would like to share is probably what i would like people to take away um, you know with my recent uh, you know experience i'll say it is 
reinvent yourself you know from time to time i'll give a couple of examples you know for that one would be my own personal experience another one maybe a little more exciting example but let's see right um and what does one mean by you know reinventing yourself you know one can ask i am who i am and uh, how can i reinvent myself what does it even mean um, now think about it uh, everyone has the same number of hours and we have the same number of hours every day since birth till we are old right and we use that time at various stages of life focusing on very many different things and reinventing ourselves in a sense means how when where you spend that time that you have in your hand and our state of mind our mental wellness our happiness all of it actually you know stems from what we do that time if we can realize that that is very powerful right wow. so for every once in a while i think we need to take a step back reflect down if you're doing you know if you're happy doing what you're doing it could be your job it could be your team it could be your you know uh, your boss it could be your hobbies it could be the time you spend in the kitchen it could be the time you spend you know with your family with your children ask yourself the question am i happy doing what i'm doing now think about this for a second um if you fast forward you know depending on what your age is 30 40 50 years down the line in your life picture yourself old nearing your end right seems like a very very gloomy picture but uh, you know it's okay please humor me picture it um now who do you see yourself surrounded by you know, definitely you know your uh, close family right but a handful of people and maybe a few friends now think about how much time are we spending with those people now in our prime age when we have the energy not as much as we would like to and why is that because our careers you know is a big necessity commitment right now and we spend easily 10 to 12 14 hours you know of our waking hours in a day in our jobs right so if we are spending such significant amount of time in our jobs and most importantly away from the people that would truly matter then we better make it uh, you know uh, worthwhile it ne- better not be things that drain your happiness it better not be with people with negative mindset it better not be in a job where you're not valued it better be with worthwhile people who elevate you you know with people who value you uh, you know who help you learn who who help you gl- grow right uh, it better be giving ha- giving you happiness and this is an awareness i think we all need to build in ourselves to identify when we are not doing worthwhile things or if we are surrounded by you know negativity right and when we do identify that we are stuck in a place where you know we're not happy i think it's very important to take steps to move out of there and that is the time to realize a time to reinvent myself right don't let that situation continue for too long and it's important that uh if you find yourself in a job you're not enjoying look at what else you would like to do instead you right. know are there friends or colleagues who are doing it already for example um you know let's say you're constantly feeling guilty about the time you spend you know with your family or child you you feel it's not enough it's not good quality time then maybe identify things that are that is draining you know cut down on things that is not adding value maybe spend less time with friends who are like you know gossiping about others and draining your time maybe get someone in the family to cut vegetables for you maybe help have you know take the help of somebody you know to do some you know chores do laundry once in two days instead of every day basically create time because time exists we only have to create it for ourselves by you know reducing frequency of uh, things that are you know probably not adding value or meaning and you will reinvent uh, yourself to be a fun parent and have conversations you know spending quality time Uh, be very clear on what matters to you and be unapologetic about it so for Correct. a professional example uh, maybe I'll, i'll share my own personal story of what happened with me in the last couple of years um, so after 20 years of being in the engineering domain i really wanted to try something else you know i hit a point where i probably was finding myself not too happy right so i had evaluated all my options of what else i could do in my career and i had two options in front of me which included trying for something within my own company or outside or try and go and do something else totally radically different right so when i asked myself you know what's the worst that can happen um i realized that maybe you know i might not find my next opportunity either within paypal or outside if that happens what would i do so that led to me identifying maybe possible seven other alternate career options for me that ranged from 
playing badminton you know as a career in the senior category in the 40 plus you know age category at the national level or maybe attempt to write a book called you know three mistakes of my career i think i have a lot to share to you know cycling from you know kanyakumari to kashmir for a cause or to become an entrepreneur to pursue an interest in you know wellness or diversity or just doing volunteering you know daily because that's also very close to my heart the fact that i had such clarity in my head on so many different options in front of me meant that i was free from the fear of failure i knew that if i didn't land that you know job i was going to go and do any of these other things and be very happy doing it right and once i had this clarity it gave me a new confident new set of confidence and with that confidence i set out to understand about this new opportunity i did all the homework that was needed right talking to people understanding the latest trends in the domain that i was pursuing and i leveraged my you know the knowledge of what the role required um uh, connected with my network spent a great deal thinking ahead as if i was playing the new role and what creative ideas or innovations you know i will bring in and then the interview preparation became putting together a story of all the homework that i had done and help the panel understand hey this is what i am bringing to the table and share that with a very open mind and passion and even after being with the company actually uh, i you know for 15 years i had to go through seven rounds of interview and in hindsight i wouldn't have it any other way because as i completed every round of interview my confidence kept growing because i could see that all the homework i did was paying off and how each interviewer was responding to my story and what i would bring to the table and finally i was really thrilled when i got you know picked for the role when i was competing against every uh you know a lot of other people who truly had experience in that domain compared to me but uh, you know successfully getting into this you know new domain a couple of years back i found myself with a new team new people you know new things to learn every day and when you're out of your comfort zone you reinvent yourself you find yourself in a learning mode and that is very rejuvenating and you know re-energizing and they say when you have nothing to lose you know you elevate yourself to perform at your best like you know how a zimbabwe team comes out of nowhere and beats an indian team on their day in a cricket match right and putting yourself in that mindset of you know what i have nothing to lose tremendously helps in getting you to a mindset of confidence where you feel at your best and and that mindset won't happen every day right it's not easy to get into that mindset every day but when that happens a certain clarity emerges on what exactly you want and when that clarity evolves you won't have a choice but to reinvent yourself and because you know exactly what you want and what brings you joy and let me share another example and uh, you know this example might be a lot more fun uh, and you know than my own personal story i am a big cricket fan and if you are too uh, i'm sure you know who ravichandran ashwin is and he's a veteran off spinner in the indian cricket team and he has been playing for india for more than a decade now and he comes across as a very intelligent cricketer who thinks analyzes a lot you know for every ball he bowls um, and to try and execute on his plans right now like in every field uh, if someone come comes across as being very sure of themselves their craft you know their skill their talent it can be perceived as someone being very proud and they won't be associated with you know having a lot of humility right they pay that likability penalty um, like you know like how rajinikanth is more loved than kamal hasan right both talented actors but nevertheless i think kamal hasan pays that likability penalty whereas rajinikanth is the darling of the you know masses right so similarly and ashwin wasn't too popular i don't think he was too popular he wasn't he was appreciated for his performance but he was not a fan favorite right um and more so after the mankad run out incident in 2019 ipl uh, it was a quite a criticized you know incident and let's not even get into whether what he did was right or not right there is two sides to that but the fact that it didn't really help his popularity and fast forward to 2020 we all went into lockdown and what does ashwin do uh, he launches a youtube channel he starts sharing stories about you know players the grounds the matches from the past he invites guests analysts you know players coaches it catches on fire his youtube channel really you know gets a big taking uh, of popularity amongst you know fans now all of us have uh, been seeing only what's happening on the ground now he's suddenly showing opening up the backstage for all of us to see what's happening behind the scenes right and everyone loves it and parallelly he's been self reflecting analyzing why he's only being picked for test cricket alone and left aside for one days and t20s right and how come jadeja has become an automatic pick when both are you know off spinners so it's because jadeja is considered an all rounder who can also bat 
So for many who might not know, Ashwin actually started out uh, for Tamil Nadu as a batsman before you know becoming a bowler. So Ashwin decides he's going to address this skill gap, right, of him not being perceived as a batsman. So he starts working on his batting again during the lockdown. He takes the help. He takes you know mentoring of players, coaches, and everyone is telling him, "Your batting is fine. You have the skill. You have the talent." You just need to start believing that you can bat, right? Now there is a term used in sports called, you know, form. Uh, they say someone is in form, someone is out of form, and see, the Boni says, Doni uh, says this, you know, beautifully, right? What is form? You know, who has seen form? Uh, form is nothing but a state of mind, a state of mind where you feel confident, you feel clarity of thoughts, you know, to give your best. Uh, for Ashwin, it was only that he had to believe in himself to back his skills that he already had. now the famous india australia cricket series early in 2021 uh, with the first match india being 36 all out and losing that match and then the comeback they made in the series to win the next three uh, test matches especially the one in you know sydney how ashwin batted bravely despite a bad back uh, to draw the match against australia it, you know it's phenomenal and i don't remember celebrating a drawn test match as much as i you know did that one right and then the series win ranks probably as high as india's world cup win at many fans for many fans and after that in the india england series back home when all specialist batsmen failed ashwin hits a century and through his youtube channel and his recent performances i would say he has reinvented himself right um, he has become so popular and loved that the entire country is calling him ashwin anna and uh, the trending of you know hashtag bring ashwin back happens every time is not you know india is not playing well and that's the power of it all that's the power of reinventing yourself um where you present a different side to people where uh, the world start seeing you very differently as well i think the key here is to truly anchor yourself around what brings you joy you know for me it was about you know hey am i being you know valued am i learning something and for ashwin it was around the joy of cricket itself if we can anchor it around that i think that's the key right uh, a quick example you know from the movie three idiots uh, raju rastogi's you know character uh, will ask rancho's character saying hey i love being an engineer but why am i failing right i am not finding success and rancho's response uh, for that will be that's because you're constantly worrying you know being fearful you've lost the joy and fun of why you wanted to be an engineer in the first place right so i think what's important again is to anchor things around why you do what you do find that joy do things that give you happiness be with people who give you positivity and when you find yourself in situation where you know we don't find that joy and happiness reflect on why you know take a step back go look for it find different ways to get to a different place change the ways of how you spend your time challenge yourself to try something different and i think you would have reinvented you a new you so maybe that's probably you know the key message that i would like to you know share in this uh, podcast uh, sidya very very uh, interesting message ajayshree i'm sure uh, consciously many would have not reinvented but over the years if you actually analyze yourself you there would have been a lot of uh, changes you would have made to your life to uh, me keep you happy as jashree says i'll only uh, a key uh, take away i have taken from her um, uh, you know messages be happy do whatever makes you to feel happy and there is a way to do it you can never say that you know my situation is not allowing my time is not allowing you are having that you are saying this year i don't have that nothing like that as she says it's all existed you just need to alter it see that there is sometimes very unfortunate uh, incidents happens which will also force you to reinvent sometimes True. so for instance in my um, uh, condition right i am um, only one daughter go lucky girl my father is a very forward uh, looking guy and they in my home they always gave me the freedom to choose what i want i always wanted to be in career everything was going fine so i generally don't value important things for example taking care of myself um you know taking care of my health uh, all these things uh, you know never appeared to me because i never had faced any problem right so i'll be not giving importance to all those things but one day um post my pregnancy um during my pregnancy um i started losing my vision mm. so i shared this um in a different forum so what happened was um uh, when i consulted doctors they were saying that it may be hormonal imbalance once you finish your lactation it should be alright but it happens so fast um 
I had only 10% of vision. So I, I used to struggle seeing the laptop. I was in office till the last day of my, um, you know, uh, delivery. Till delivery, I was in office. So I used to see laptop like this. I, uh, I'll keep my laptop font higher because I'll tell to myself that this will be over after lactation. So post lactation also nothing got better. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, when I, uh, I didn't want to scare my parents or family. So I went and met the doctor. Doctor said, sorry, you lost 90% uh, of your vision. You cannot do anything else. So you have to live with this condition. Better you drop your career. And you don't do a work which involves laptop. I couldn't imagine actually whatever because at least she is a singer, she is a spokesperson. I am nothing of that sort. Actually, I'm I was always into this um, field of people management, marketing. I couldn't think anything other than that. So I was so devastated for me found that that's it, this is the end. So but when I was sitting alone, I still remember uh, post um, finishing a doctor's appointment, I went and sat in a temple and um, I was questioning God, like, why this is for me in 30, 29 years? Why this happened to me? Uh, that's all what I will do. And finally, uh, I don't know, after one hour of all my crying and this thing, I, uh, I was asking myself, what do you want? I was like, I wanted to work. Then I decided, like Ashley, she said that, okay. I cannot see laptop that much, right? It's okay. Yeah? I have grown up the leadership there. I have a team. What I want, they will make it. Males only have to write, right? I will manage with my 10% of vision. Okay. I, I cannot tell this to office because I was not sure how they will take it. So I was like, okay, I will manage this. I told to myself, um, one and a half years, nobody noticed that I have a problem. So I used to prepare my PPT in a way my teammates will help. Um, I will not turn around the um, you know screen. I'll talk whatever is there in that. And my managing director used to say, wow, what a preparation, what a dedication. But to myself, I know even if I turn, I'll not be able to see it. <laughs> That's the reality. But one and a half, two years, in that two years journey, I learned many things which I was ignoring. Mm -hmm. How um, until you have certain things, you will not value that, right? I, I miss many things. I will not be able to watch movie clearly. I'll not be able to see the sceneries clearly. I'll not be able to see people's face clearly. And my son's own face, I have seen only after one and a half years clearly. So I had uh, that time uh, really reinvented myself. That time I really thought how much I belittled the life. How much I have not really utilized when it was there. Right. And luckily, I have now a hard lens, which Shankaranetralaya came up after two years of this condition. And now uh, with this lens, I'm able to see. The uh, only thing is seven hours once I have to give a break uh, for one hour and wear it again. It's, it has its own practical difficulties, but at least I'm able to see. Right. So I, I started celebrating life. Every small thing. Um, that reinvented myself. So I stopped complaining for petty things. I, uh, you know, uh, because... I, that made me to realize, you know, there are worse things that can happen to you. Like, uh, you know, small, small things, disappointments or not going to a movie, failed vacation, uh, you know, one not recognition, somebody stealing your credit, you think that is the end of the world, somebody not giving you promotion is the end of the world. Listen to me, that is not. Absolutely. <laughs> so that day I started taking care of myself. Uh, in awesome. a lot of pregnancy induced things came to me like varicose veins which was like 50 years old will face i am facing that now only so maybe i didn't take care of myself so i started taking taking care of myself i started waking up early going to um, you know walk uh, take care of my um, uh, health uh, you know wellness all that came but i would only say that don't wait for that one drastic thing to happen to reinvent yourself True. Keep reinventing, keep thinking like what will keep you happy. And people may say you're selfish, doesn't matter here. You have to take care of yourself it's first. The in your surroundings. The in aeroplane, always in flight, they will say, right? First, you save yeah. yourself from oxygen before helping others. That is what you have to do in uh, reality, also. So, yeah. I think both of us shared pretty long stories, but I'm sure that. Um, that will help. It's very inspiring, uh, India. I'm so glad you shared uh, shared it because I, I, if there is anything that this COVID pandemic has taught us is to truly take care of ourselves, right? From a health exactly. standpoint as well. So reinventing, you know, doesn't mean only at workplace. It workplace, means you know, yeah. reinventing your whole self, right? 
wellness, your uh, you know your mind space, your uh, physical health, everything matters. Um, because in the long run, to your point, uh, you know the, that missed recognition or that petty you know colleague or uh, you know mean friend, all of that won't matter actually. So absolutely, I, I still remember I was crying for one week for not coming as uh, a class first in tenth. So you know, tenth results came. I thought always I'll be the first. I came second. I still remember in one week I was there. Now I don't even remember what percentage I scored in that. <laughs> Doesn't matter, really, right? Sometimes you know, as one day I was sitting and thinking that which all made me to feel so devastated. Now all those things doesn't matter at all. I think we are wasting. We are not celebrating our life. Just celebrate our life is what I will say. So, um, Jayshree, so that was pretty inspiring uh, story. So, uh, before winding up the session, um, I wanted to ask a couple of rapid fire questions. You being a singer, we cannot leave you without singing a few lines for us. So, what will be your favorite song and couple of lines for the audience? Absolutely. So, I, you know, how do I pick any one song to sing? There's so much. Uh, uh, Top of the mind recall. Huh? Sorry. Top of the mind recall. Yeah. Okay. So I'll probably, uh, you know, I had the good fortune to sing a song in a Telugu movie called "Egi Se Tara Jivulu." I'm oh. not Telugu. Uh, you know, I'm actually a Tamilian, but uh, you know, I learned the lyrics. Uh, you know, writing it down in English. So I'll probably, you know, sing a few lines uh, from that. Wow. अंतुले गेल बैठपेटे बंद वेग ओट मेदरीपोक अड़वे मुंब मुकी गेल वे वरक तोड़ ओट मुंदी दीज फोर लाइन यू नो ट्रूली मीन Uh, failure is your best friend it will sit next to you and teach you a lot lot of things and you know you keep running until you achieve success these four lines meaning behind it is that and wow. uh, the song is very close to my heart i just um, i was blessed to have the opportunity to sing a very meaningful song wow jeshri and uh, those who don't know he's a good playback singer too so great jeshri i'm uh, truly delightful to have you uh, here So okay, uh, since we spoke about one of uh, singing, okay, you have so many faces. So I'll go for each face and I'll pick one one question that we. Uh, you love cricket, that I could see. That those who didn't understand cricket also would have picked up interest on the way you explained <laughs> about Ashwin and uh, trivia. Ashwin was my junior in the college, by the way. Oh, so, wow. so um, you know, uh, to connect to that, uh, okay, we'll have a fictional question. So if you are a cricketer which cricketer uh, you will mirror okay so um more than mirror who i can relate to currently probably yeah. is uh, you know uh, virat kohli uh, i think oh, he's yeah. a great example of someone who leads by example right um he models the behavior discipline commitment passion that he wants his team to have and uh, look at the current fitness level of the indian cricket team for example right who would have thought 5 years back that the indian cricket team will be known for his pace bowling to be the world's best or indian fielders you know pulling off such uh, stunts on the field right i don't think we would have ever imagined that back when we were growing up but that is the reality right and um, i think all thanks to you know kohli for leading by example and being a great role model so i think i believe as a leader uh, you cannot inspire others to excellence if you cannot hold yourself up to such high standards so i i would i relate that a lot uh, you know uh, with varad kohli and definitely uh, uh, you know dhoni for a school head you know he's all, he always rocks uh, but maybe for this aspect of virat kohli you know i i can relate to him quite a bit no wow, interesting uh, so okay uh, what is the one technology car breaking technology which will change change the future of the um, world or tech world according to you so i i think you know being in the payments industry uh, you know fintech uh, where paypal you know is a big player i'm i'm fascinated you know by the growth adoption and usage of you know bitcoins right i really think that has the potential to uh, transform the future like you know before uh, credit cards you know came i don't think uh, you know people were comfortable and now uh, at least Uh, a, a majority of the population is quite comfortable and you know it's almost like you know second nature to walk out without cash and be able to you know use it and similarly i think probably looks like bitcoin is here to you know transform how uh, money gets uh, you know exchanged so let's see great so 
how do you see few years down the line in terms of giving back to the society um i i strongly believe in you know karma right uh, it's got nothing to do with religion but i strongly believe in uh, karma and in the circle of life um i think only in giving that we receive and um, i'm lucky to have had opportunities through paypal's you know gives uh, which is a forum to you know give back to society and uh, personally you know on 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 uh, my side as well um, the joy it brings to you know to see a smile on another face the satisfaction you feel at a deep level uh, i think that is unmatched and uh, my daughter who's a child author uh, you know she has this interest and desire to instill a strong reading habit in young children and uh, makes books you know more accessible especially in rural areas so probably in a few years i might be associated with that more to you know support her and help her and i also wish to spend um, you know more time volunteering to probably you know help three causes that are close to my heart uh, i think girl children right like you know the kind of mentoring and you know guidance that we can offer them uh, more and more how do we extend that time um, and then in terms of you know environmental wellness i think covid has really taught us that you know we better take care of this one planet that we have uh, you know which is uh, which is the only one that we have right now um, you know water conservation and you know ocean um, you know clean up right i think we continue to be wasteful and you know polluting the earth in a lot lot many ways we really need to take responsibility and change how we live otherwise we will not have a planet you know for our future generation so it's it's really important that we all take that personal responsibility do something about it and finally around education right how do we share and you know how do i share and teach more children as much as i could i love spending time with children i love playing with them i love um you know offering you know perspectives in relatable ways uh, to every child that i interact with so that is also very close to my heart so maybe these are the ways i will uh, spend time one quote you live by um i think it would be uh, you know it's even part of my you know whatsapp dp picture i think it's uh, live every moment laugh every day and love beyond words um as much as possible i wear my heart on my sleeves and uh, try to live by this otherwise what's the point of being alive you know that's the way i think about it yes that's great so uh, i for me also long time my whatsapp status is uh, to be loved be lovable i believe in that you know you cannot complain that people are not loving you until you are lovable so yeah uh, so it was a great personal learn learning experience for me jayshree keep inspiring i uh, it's my personal request to you to have to go on lot more forums keep mentoring a uh, woman out there i'm seeing a lot of women who are very talented but lack in self confidence they need mentors like you i hope you will touch lot of lives and create lot of industries like you for the near future thanks once again for coming into the show it was honor hosting you jayshree and keep up all your interest as you always do always do thank you once again jayshree thank you so much Yeah, yeah, go on, go on. Uh, it's been a wonderful conversation honestly speaking it felt like i was just talking to a friend and um, so uh, thank you so much for uh, you know hosting me and um, i really want to thank uh, move you know leaders uh, for their initiative to bring out and celebrate you know more women leaders and uh, this is a fantastic initiative very proud to be part of it thank you I'm sure with uh, through your network also this mov leaders will get amplified i'm sure about it thank you thank you jayshree once again So this is Sandhya Balak Singh signing off. Before I meet with one another exciting guest in the coming week, please do remember this same episode is available in all platforms, podcast streaming platforms too. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you.